I don't know if you've seen uh, what Willie's done in the past. He, he can do a couple backflips in the Cavalry because of that. They've done a, a few backflips on goals. Might we see you do that if you score a goal, or uh, might we just see something different for no. Sally? Definitely not for me. No. If I do that, I'll break my back or something. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to One Soccer. I'm your host today, Josh Deming, joined by my colleague Alex Gongay Ruzik and our special guest, Lucas Diaz. Lucas, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you guys? I'm doing pretty well. We're excited to talk to you. And my first question for you is just to go back to Portugal. You know, you came through the Sporting Academy. Uh, you were one of the first to go to Sporting from Toronto's Academy. What was that whole experience like? I mean, it was a, it was a great experience. Um, I left at a very young age, um, which I wasn't expecting really to start off my career, let's say in Europe. Um, I enjoyed myself a lot. Um, it's still not over because most likely in June, I'll be back there again. Um, but I, it was a great experience. You know, I learned a lot, um, different mentality, a little bit in Europe, you know, you, you get mature at a younger age and, um, and it really helped me be the man that I was today. And Lucas said, uh, you know, Thanks for, for taking the time today, of course. And looking back at that time as well, you got to p train and play with the first team. You know, it's one thing to play in the academy. It's a huge jump up to that first team level where you're seeing these top players who play in Champions League football, etc. How special is that experience? What were some of those memories of training with those guys? No, it was definitely um, an amazing experience. Uh, I had the privilege to train with them and even play friendlies with them, which was something that helped me a lot and understand, you know, what level you have to be at to play in, you know, the, the best leagues in the world, you know, playing Champions League football, World Cup football. These players all have tons of experience, um, national level and international level. Um, and yeah, I remember the first training session, I was 17, you know, very, you know, nervous, scared, you know, because, you know, we're talking about big players, you know, big names. But, but yeah, I had the privilege to train with them many times. And now it was something that's almost, you know, natural, you know, I learned a lot. I understand the way they... They play the intensity you need to have when you go there and and it helped me a lot um you know form me as a player i am today and it helped me you know increase my my intelligence my you know fast play um all benefits and it was uh, it's it, it's always great when you go there and train so there was agate poro nunez those are some of the names that you play with i mean you played alongside agate in i think your debut friendly so I'm just curious to see what it's like to see some of those guys go on and play for some massive clubs. Two of them are starring in the Premier League and one is playing with Mbappe at PSG. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Um, like I said, uh, we talk about sporting, you know, of course, it's a very, very big team um, that's always, you know, been known for their talents from the youth ages. Um, and, and yeah, like I said, being with them and be able to train with, you know, um, Nunu, Minj, um, you know, Mateusz, Potts, Inacius that are all, you know, playing at the highest level possible you know it's there's only benefits involved you know and and you being you know exposed to that to that level of training you know on constant basis let's say on day to day um you know it, it, it's incredible you can't ask for better you know you just are able to see the level that you have to be at and to understand you know like okay this is what i gotta do to you know get to where i want to be you know now you got a, a big opportunity this year in the Canadian Premier League. We've seen a lot of young Canadian talents get a chance to, to, to cut their teeth in this league. What kind of drew you to, to this opportunity? I mean, uh, what sort of drew me was, you know, the coach um, spoke to me already a few months ago about about this opportunity. He showed, you know, lots of interest um, that he wanted to bring me here, which, you know, I, I, I really enjoyed. Also, you know, the technical directors and everyone. Um, and sort of what drew me was just, you know, I felt that you know i could have i could be a very important piece to this team you know and hopefully you know help them um you know win games and you know bring more quality quality to the table um and yeah i think what just really drew me was you know i i want to win i want to play um and i want to you know uh feel important you know and and do my thing and you know i wanted to play professional minutes which i think that's important you know at my age now to get that exposure to play with men you know day in day out and of course this um the tournament that we had now playing against Orlando also, you know, drew my attention to be able to also, you know, test my qualities against an MLS side and 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 see what level I'm at and where I can uh, can play. You know. Now you just mentioned him, so I'm curious to get your initial impression of Tommy Wielden Jr. What were those first conversations like? It was very simple, simple and short, to be honest. You know, I was in Portugal. Um, you know, we, uh, we talked through WhatsApp a few times through through video chat. Um, he just, you know, said that you know he wanted me to. 
you know, I have had a, you know, a, a cup this last year at Sporting has been a bit di difficult for me, you know, it hasn't been, um, you know, amazing. Um, and he just, you know, what communicated to me that, you know, he's wanted me to be happy again, you know, you know, just feel free. He, you know, I think he knows, of course, the quality that I can bring to the team. And that's pretty much what I also wanted. I just said, you know, I wanted to just play, you know, on, you know, in and out, you know, on games. I want to just feel happy, you know, play my game and just help the team. That's all I really wanted. And he, you know, we had the same ideas um, and I thought it was a win-win situation for everyone. Lucas, you obviously had the chance, uh, you know, last week to make your Cavalry debut going out on the pitch against Orlando. Uh, you know, a very bright debut, you got the ball a lot and were wanting to make things happen. What did you kind of recall of uh, that moment? Um, I mean, I was very happy to make my debut. Um, very happy. Um, I, I felt very well. I felt very good on the pitch. Um, and yeah, I never really, you know, I've been in Europe for so long. I haven't really, you know, been in, let's say, North America and, you know, in Canada and stuff like that, playing against MLS clubs. So it was my first time. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, you know, unfortunately, we couldn't, you know, we couldn't um, get our objective, which is to continue in the competition. But I think, um, as the coach said, and very well to us also, you know, he was, he said that, you know, these experiences are important to, you know, keep on pushing forward and to, you know, keep that standard, you know what I mean? To, you know, be there next year. And also for this organization to, you know, keep on pushing, which I think is important for them. Um, but I felt very good, felt very, you know, well on the field and I enjoyed myself a lot. Now, I want to know what your goals are for Cavalry this year. Obviously, like you mentioned, you're on loan, you remain a sporting player. But what are some of your short term versus your long term goals and what are you looking to achieve? I mean, to be honest, um, you know, when I thought I, when I was younger, I was a player that, you know, looked a lot, maybe, you know, the future and stuff. And I really think on day to day basis, which I think was something that I that I changed in the past year or so, which is something very positive for myself. You know, I'm I'm not really I don't have expectations, you know, or, or goals right now and saying, OK, in three months, you know, six months, I want to be here. I want the team to do this. That's that's not really what I'm thinking. At. I'm really thinking about, you know, day to day, you know, every day we go into training, you know, to do whatever I can to help the team to keep on, you know, progressing as a player individually and helping the team collectively. Um, and, you know, that's all it is. It's just, you know, for myself, staying healthy, playing as much as I can, of course, but helping the team. But the most important is, you know, every every game we got, either it's, you know, in the cups, leagues, you know, we got to win, play well, and, you know, every day know that as a team we're getting better and we just can keep on moving forward together. That's pretty much it. Lucas, uh, you know, you're, yourself as a player, you're, you're number 10. Uh, sometimes in the modern game, you see number 10s become eights, become wingers, sometimes, you know, other positions. Just curious, what do you kind of find to be your best position that gets the, the most out of your creative skills on the pitch? Um, yeah, I mean, many people ask, ask me that question during my career just because there's actually many people that don't really know where, you know, um, that my best position is. I said, many play people say, uh, left wing for me to cut in. Um, some people say eight, so I can draw back and move that ball forward. Some say ten because I'm very good in the pockets. Um, you know, if I had to choose a position, I'd say number ten, of course. You know, I feel freer in the middle. I love drifting off to the wing, though, um, to be able to get that ball in the wing, you know, go one-on-one, -on -one, two-on-one, -on -one, cut in the middle. I also like, you know, developing the play, you know, getting that ball back and moving it forward as a team to help them progress, us progress on the field. Um, so, so yeah, I think more of a 10, you know, those 10s that don't really have, they have a position, but just, you know, wander around, you know what I mean? That's, that's where I feel most comfortable. Antoine Griezmann type style, you know, yeah, yeah you complete know, freedom. Wander, yeah. That's, that's, that's my, that's where I like, like it the most, you know, just wander around, go in spaces and gaps where you think that that can help the team as most. And that's where I think, you know, I can uh, probably do, do my best job, let's say. Canada's definitely needed one of those, but um, <laughs> Lucas, uh, you played at the 2020 U23 Olympic qualifiers as a 17-year-old for Canada. Uh, you had some fun teammates in that squad. Tejan Buchanan was one. He obviously had a big breakout tournament. And your Cavalry FC teammate, Callum Montgomery, how special was that experience for you? It was a great experience. Um, at the time, I had I didn't represent Canada. Um, at the time, I was representing Portugal, uh, Portuguese national team. I at U16 and U15. Um, when I got the call at the time, it was from Mauro Vielo. Um, he uh, has had messaged me, and we have, you know, to say that look, we wanted to invite you to this, this tournament. Um, that time, like I said, I was with Portugal. But when he messaged me and we talked about it a bit, we called each, we called um, one another a few times. He, you know, he made me excited. You know, I thought it was something that was, you know, could be very exciting for me. And also being, you know, only 17 years old, I thought even exposure and everything it could be very good for my career. 
um and yeah i i enjoyed myself a lot it was it was a rough period because it was covid so it was a lot of protocols at the time which caused a bit of a delay let's say um but i enjoyed myself a lot unfortunately again we couldn't be in mexico but i really enjoyed my my first taste with the national team with canada everyone welcomed me with open arms i was you know like you said tejan was also there and look where he is now congratulate him um and and yeah you know uh, it was it was amazing it was a great experience and i hope i can have many more throughout my career yeah like you, you mentioned obviously there's some big years coming up for canada You've had the chance to represent Canada and Portugal, but you know now you get a chance to potentially see Canada host a World Cup, etc. How special would it be if they were to come calling again and then offer you a chance? How would you feel about that? No, hundred percent for me. Um, for me, the goal is to hundred percent. You know, hopefully be in the in the squad for twenty twenty six for Canada. You know, that's my that's my goal right now. Looking, you know, for the next maybe two years. Um, of course, you know that's that's probably one of the biggest goals I have for sure to be in that that World Cup back home. It would be a dream come true, and I'm definitely going to be working daily on on that to 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 get that goal and make sure that I'm able to you know clinch that goal, which is something that's very important for me. I think I, it's fair to say I can speak for Alex. Both very excited to hear that. But now I don't want to let it off too easy. We got some rapid fire Cavalry FC questions coming your way. So. First thing is first, first question is going to be, Lucas, who has taken you under your wing so far as a leader in that Cavs squad? Mm, that's a very good question, actually. Um, to be honest, I don't think it's fair to mention one player or one coach, let's say. Um, since I'm one of the youngest guys that's there, um, since I've been there, I've actually been surprised with the way they welcomed me. Um, you know, sometimes when younger players might go there, you know, maybe from like, you know, let's say, I don't know, another club, you never know how you might be treated sometimes, you know, just because, you know, they're, they've been there longer and stuff. But I've actually been very impressed. They've been amazing to me. Um, coaching staff, you know, the players, it's it's not fair to mention just one person. To be honest, everyone's been very welcoming welcoming to me and I, I have nothing, you know, negative to say about it. Everyone's been amazing to me. No hot water there for Lucas. So no, he's, he's good. He's good there. He's thank good God. There. Thank God. <laughs> um, well, then, Lucas, uh, another one. Who's who's been your football bro so far with Cavalry? You know, sometimes you just have that connection with the guy right away. You feel that that chemistry with. For sure, for sure. Um, I, I mean, I mean, of course, on teams, if, you know, you, when you start off, you're with more, let's say, uh, some players than others. I mean, Gutierrez, I'm living with him uh, right now, so we've we of course, you know, are always together on and off the pitch. Um, so he's probably someone that's been very close to me so far just because, um, you know, he speaks Spanish too. So I'm trying to learn some Spanish, you know, <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, he's, I'm living with him and it's been, he's been an amazing guy to me. Help, been helping me out a lot. Um, we've been traveling a lot, so I haven't been really, you know, able to, you know, settle down and let's see, see Calgary and stuff a bit, but, uh, but he's been amazing to me. He's been helping me a lot, settle down and, you know, you know, if I needed anything, he's always there to, you know, help me out and stuff. So, yeah, probably do with you. Now, has there been a class clown, so to speak, type guy, someone on the road trips who, you know, cracks everybody up? Someone who, any, anyone like that kind of stick out to you? I mean, to be honest, there's many funny guys on the team. You know, I, like I said, I don't, I haven't, like, known them for a long time. It's been maybe, like, three weeks that I've known them um, for. But, you know, there's some guys that are, of course, funny. You know, Willie's a funny guy. Um, uh, Brad's a funny guy. There, 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 there's many funny guys, to be honest. I've interviewed Willie like four or five times, and I had a feeling you're maybe <laughs> you're maybe gonna go that direction. Yeah, yeah, he's a funny guy. He's definitely a funny guy. Okay, last one. I mean, I don't know if you've seen uh, what Willie's done in the past. He, he can do a couple backflips in the cavalry because of that. <laughs> They've done a, a few backflips on goals. Might we see you do that if you score a goal, or uh, might we just see something different for no. Sally? Definitely not for me. No. If I do that, I'll break my back or something. I'm not capable of doing those things. Nah, me, I don't really got a celebration. Um, it just really what, what I feel in the moment, but definitely no backlinks for me. <laughs> That's all the time we have today. Lucas, thank you so much for giving us your time and best of luck this season. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it.